Ciao dear hearts, can you believe that this is the very last filming Friday in 2020? I don't know about you, but I'm very happy to see this year end. But enough of that, um, today it's going to be all about canvas and we're going to make a mini canvas concertina. But before we get to that, I want to introduce ourselves. My name is Katarina Giglio, all my friends call me Kat. And I am a professional mixed media artist and I am represented by a gallery in Fort Collins, Colorado, which is attached to an amazing store called Essentials. And the guy behind the camera is my husband, Don Diggison, and we are celebrating our fifth anniversary here on YouTube. So woohoo, we want you to celebrate with us too. We're very excited. Um, and we want to thank you so much for all your thumbs up, your shares, your kind comments and remarks. Uh, we so appreciate that. And also we wanna thank you for all of your tips in our tip jar in our descriptions below. We wanna thank you for using all of our Amazon, all of our products on Amazon and using our Amazon links. Uh, we so appreciate that. And our pop-up sale was such a success and thank you for purchasing our work in the gallery. So let's take a look at my little book. So come here, I want to show you the little book I made, Mini Canvas Concertina. And um, this one is really rustic and really yummy, has a front cover and a back cover. And um, you know how it is when you're creating art, um, sometimes the idea that you have in mind just turns out to not be what you're going to be making. <laughs> so, and that's how it was with this little book. I had a completely different idea and it turned into a book of seasons. And so the front cover is obviously fall. It's got a pine cone and um, looks like winter is coming. It's getting kind of blustery. And when you open it, we go to winter with snow falling and covering the land and it moves on into the back which is springtime and wildflowers and then the summer is on the back so it's a double-sided book and i had a lot of fun making it i love the rustic look of it there are lots of layers um, on here lots of paint and gesso and um, i thought today we would make another one but it would be a little bit more less rustic, a little fancier. Mini canvas concertina. So we're using heavy canvas, which is on our links. Um, you can pick it up there. And um, I use it a lot in the studio. It's um, really fun um, to use for all different kinds of things. And then I'm using a really thin cardboard today. Now you can use a thicker cardboard. You could use um, corrugated. It's just gonna make your book bigger and chunkier. And um, I decided I wanted a kind of thin look. I knew I was gonna put a lot of layers on it. And um, I just wanted to, um, wanted it to be a little bit thinner than what it would be with corrugated cardboard. But you can use that and um, play with it. Uh, so we're gonna make another one. And uh, since I knew you were coming, I already prepped all the pages and everything. Now it's a three by three, like all of our other little mini books in our library. Um, or three by three ish, whatever you choose to do, because you know how I am about measuring. And uh, so I've already made uh, one of the covers and uh, I'm gonna share with you the technique for making this one here and how I used it. Um, so three by threes, and then it's real simple, just 15 inches um, by three um, of canvas. And I gessoed everything. So the, the cardboard front and back have been gessoed. The only thing that hasn't been gessoed are the covers because they're gonna get plenty of gesso and they're gonna get plenty of um, gel mat medium, which is what we're gonna use to hold it all together. And I think that the salvage edge on here is, the allowance is probably about a half inch. Um, you can make it a little bit bigger if you want but don't cut yourself short on it because it, <laughs> it's a beast to try to get to, uh, to stay shut, as you'll see. So we're gonna get started with gluing that down.
So I am using just my little chipboard brush and I'm going to put gel matte medium on one side of the cardboard. And, and then we're going to center it. And I've got my gloves on, of course. Um, I'm gonna center it up as close as we can. This has to come down just a little bit. And you want all the points to kind of be right on the center like that. So, okay, so, and what I did was I pushed it back, folded it because, you know, canvas can be really ornery, so. And I'm going to use gel matte medium really liberally on the corners. Okay, and then I'm gonna just hold it down. Now, if you wanna take the time to uh, iron it, be my guest, but I did not do that. I just, you know, ironing, I don't even iron tablecloths and napkins anymore. I just live with a few wrinkles. I like wrinkles. Wrinkles are good. <laughs> um, so, okay, so now I've got these glued down and then I just did the sides. And like I said, it can be a little bit ornery, but you just have to show it who's boss. And artists are boss in the studio, right? We're the, we're the people that tell the materials what to do. It's just the ideas sometimes have a mind of their own. <laughs> Now, I recommend folding it this way because if you don't, if you cut out the corner, then you're gonna have frayed edges because as you see, canvas has this tendency to fray. And when you do something that's really rustic, it looks really cool. When you're doing something that's a little more refined or prettier, um, then that's not very cool. So if you wanna cut them out, then you know by all means go ahead and cut them but um, because it's your book you get to do it any way you want to so okay now I've got it pretty much glued down and if they overlap on you like this one does I'm just gonna take a little pair, tiny pair of scissors and I'm just gonna clip that off because you don't need any more bulk it's gonna be nice and chunky as it is and um, so you'll have that chunkiness just in the material alone. I'm trying to get my hand out of the way so you can see it. Okay, got that done. Now we have hidden ties that we have to put in here. So now it's a good time for me to go over all of the pieces that we're going to use in the new book. So I knew this book was going to be really rustic and so I just used, um, actually this is lace cut off from an old pillow and you can see I, I loved the raggedy look of it. But on this book, okay, this has been quite a year for us. We've had a lot of difficult things that have happened um, and um, so we, we can't go to Italy. Um, we, we had another trip that was just canceled, so I decided I was going to make an Italian Christmas book. And I got some yummy um, Italian Florentine papers, and I have an old uh, guidebook uh, from um, Venice. And I thought I would use some pictures. I've got some old fleur de -lis, um, and um, some old papers, and this is a wrapping paper that I got in Florence and an old map and this yummy document paper. So I thought we might incorporate all of these things into our book. So I just pulled a few things together rather than going through every single stash. I know how you like doing that, but um, I figured that this video would be long enough just the way it is. And I thought I would use rayon tape just because um, it would be really pretty. 
and not quite as rustic, but still really lovely. So the first thing I want to decide is the covers. And um, I just, I L-O-V-E love these Florentine papers. They look so pretty. Um, and I like both of them. Um, I found this image and I thought she would be perfect for the front cover. It came out of the guide, the old guidebook, which if you can find old Italian um, or French guidebooks, buy them because they have just fabulous things inside. And um, especially for your travel journals and things like that. Um, so I wanted these and I'm leaning toward this one because it has A, more colors. And, um, and it's not, it isn't quite as limited, but also because of the sparkly gold, I just think that's really pretty. So I think we're gonna do that. And then the other thing is, I think this ribbon works really well with it. Um, there are, there's like a purple color, uh, but I think this blue will be lovely with it. So we're gonna use that and we're gonna put the rest away. I'm trying not to get cornstarch all over my sweater. <laughs> um, Okay, so I cut the ribbon to about 24 inches and we're going to hide it. So we're, we've got our canvas, which I already folded and um, of course it's been gessoed back and forth and it's, we're going to glue it onto the covers, but we're going to hide the ribbon underneath first. So. We're going to add the gel mat medium generously because <laughs> we want it to stay. So yes, we were quite disappointed we found out that our trip to Italy in April has been canceled. And um, and that was rather disappointing. So, so making a book always cheers me up. Uh, making something about the country I can't go to always cheers me up. And so this will be just lovely. And art is such a healing form of therapy. Um, I highly recommend creating lots of art during this time of pandemic. And, um, okay, then we're gonna put this one on here. And you don't have to, you know, don't don't fret about it being too long on one side or shorter on the other. I mean, it, if you worry about all that stuff, then you're just not, you're not gonna get, you know, art made. There's There's reasons for everything to not work out in art. I wouldn't have gotten that little book made if I had stayed with my original plan. I wouldn't have liked it. It wouldn't have been right. It was just, you know, one of those things where you just have to move on. It's not working out and you do something different. Now look how easy that is. See, simple. Okay. Now we've got the covers and the ties, the hidden ties. And we're going to work on getting the cover. So one of the things that I wanted to mention is that you want your ribbons to be pretty well lined up. If one's just slightly lower or higher, that's fine. But, um, but you don't want them to be at different places because the whole object is to tie up your book. And so I've decided I'm gonna cut this down a little bit and that I definitely wanna use it for the cover. And, um, and I've decided this just looks so perfect together and I'm not crazy about that white showing so we're going to get rid of that and just cut it a little bit. I'm going to try not to be too fussy about my cover but sometimes I am and I think this would look really good here underneath and I have this little bit of it's antique lace that was painted um, I got, got it years ago and I just L-O-V-E love it. And I think I'm gonna put that on the bottom here. So I'm gonna cut this off and use that. So I'm gonna glue this down. 
and this paper is just so pretty. Now, if you wanted to use uh, gesso on here, um, clear gesso, that would be fine. Um, I decided that I wouldn't bother with it here. I've got it on the inside, and I thought I would cover pretty much the whole cover. Cover the cover. So, and I want to move it over just slightly. Let me take my little knife here and reposition it. And that's a little better. Okay, now. Now it's up too high. Okay. Sometimes you just have to play with it. Okay, so one down. This one, we're going to put the same place where the ribbon is. which is Italian writing, so that makes sense. Looks great. And then we're going to glue our beauty. Her name is Ariana by Tintoretto. Um, and we're gonna put her closer to the top. And then we'll glue these down. Very pretty. I love the little stars. Oop, stay. Naughty lace. Don't move. Oop. Doing it again. Okay. Obviously, we need more of this. Okay. Yum. What do you think? It's coming along. Okay, now, instead of just cutting that, these little pieces, I'm just going to sand it. I've just got a little tiny piece of sandpaper, and I'm just going to sand it off. Just like that. Let's do the inside now. I always go ahead with what I know for sure I want to do. And I know for sure I want to put a map on the back. Um, but I'm not sure if I want to use this one from Florence or this one from uh, Venice. And I think I'm going to use this one just because it has more blue. Um, although I do. You know, it it does it looks you know pretty good with this one too. Not that it's going to be right on top of it, but um, but still, I think it would be really pretty. And I love the ship and everything. So I'm just going to use part of it and glue it on here to give an idea of that. So we're going to do that right now. So I'm gonna, just going to tear it up, and then it's going to just be glued on here. I love the little ship there showing. From the auto park. And we'll just go all the way down and use the... So, we can find our way, right? Find our way back to Italy. So, I like that. We're going to cut off the white because that's not, we're going to leave the black. Okay. And then we're going to glue it down. So to do that, we're going to have to kind of press the wrinkles out just a bit. And then we're going to glue it on here. I'm going to glue it on sections. it in sections, I should say. <laughs> and we can see what we've got. So I want to move it up just slightly. There we go. And I'm going to tear it 
a little more this way. Make it just a little more interesting. You don't have to have the whole thing to tell your story, right? You only need a part of it. Okay, so see how that goes. Sometimes when you're using old papers, they will tend to wrinkle. And, um, and that's okay because they're old and you know, wrinkles, wrinkles have their way. <laughs> so just want to smooth it out as much as you can. And now, you know, we're going to do a lot more embellishment on here. I'm not going to finish the whole thing today. You'll, you know, we'll, we'll show you the finished piece on the 8th when we come back because we're going to take off a break. We'll be gone until January 8th. We'll come back and I'll do a studio tour like I always do. Now, to get under this, I'm just going to use my um, palette knife and just push it in just like that. Okay, and it's not going to cut it. I thought it would, but oops, tore it just a little bit. That's all right. Okay, got a good connection here. All right. And then we can add something more if we want to, but we've got to let that dry. We can't fold it until it's a little drier. So we're on our way. So I'm thinking about putting this piece here in the inside and um, giving a little view into um, Italian life, and uh, but not using the whole thing, just just part of it. So. Um, I'm just going to use my my palette knife and see. Okay, so that's going to work there. And then here's the natural fold here. I don't want it to go on the whole thing. At least I don't think I do. <laughs> so. Um, but I want it to fit in here nicely, just right up to the fold. So, and right to the fold here. I don't want it to go over that because then it'll, it'll bunch up and you don't want it to bunch up. So, all right, so we're just going to rip that. This way is fine. I don't mind if there's a little white. Now, I'm thinking about putting white gesso on here, but you'll have to wait and see if I do that when we come back on the 8th, <laughs> because we're not going to get to that part today. Um, but if I did, I would just take a paintbrush and paint some white gesso. And the reason I would put white gesso is because it's so opaque. I mean, it's like white right now, white, you know, or black. Um, they, you know, that, um, that stuff is just, if you need black, just go right to gesso. If you need white, I mean, those two things are just so brilliantly gorgeous. Um, and so I, it would really offset everything on here. Um, on the other book, I used kind of a brown color and, um, I think I want this right in the middle here. Uh, I used kind of a brown color. I added that to the uh, gesso so that it was um, had that kind of a grungy look to it, which I really liked, you know, like uh, fall coming in, like the grass browning and dr drying out. Okay, so we're just going to trim this off with the scissors and then I'm going to glue it right down. <clears throat> All right, so I decided to put this here, put this here, and I've torn this piece to add to the back. So um, I'm going to just glue this down now, and, um, and then we'll put the other pictures on top of it. 
and um, it's going to add this continuity to the story. And um, I just love this old Italian writing. I just think it's so cool. And, and like I said, I think I'm going to finish it off with some white gesso. But right now, I think I'm going to be happy with the way this looks. And I'm just going to trim this off just a little bit. There we go doesn't have to be super precise, but I didn't want it to be, you know, as raggedy as the other one, um, which I love that kind of unfinished look. Now you could just cut it off there, um, but um, I decided to go ahead and, and put it on, feed it underneath. Um, <clears throat> And you could save on your paper that way, whatever you decide you want to do. Um, and I think what I really like is the continuity of the blue and the blue with just a little bit of the orange. So then we're going to glue this down and we'll be all done for today. Okay, so I have it. Um, cut to fit and I used my uh, my sandpaper to edge it off and I really like the way that looked so I'm gonna do that on the other one too um, so that it looks just a little bit rustic yeah that looks pretty nice and worn like that old walls. Okay, so we've got something on the back. We've got a little bit going back here. And I don't want to finish the whole thing today. I want to show you the rest on the 8th. But I wanted to give you some ideas about decorating your book. And obviously making the book is pretty simple. Um, and it's going to stand up just perfectly because it's canvas. Um, so I've got a lot more opportunities and I can't wait to share it with you on the 8th. Well, we're at Chow for now and it's the very last one for 2020 and uh, I had fun making these books today and I hope you'll try it. Um, you can make a lot of different books to go in your little uh, concertina, uh, canvas concertina library one rustic and one a little fancier and uh, just play with it and have fun with it and um, we're going to be back on the 8th and I'll show you my finished book then we're going to do a studio tour and I'm going to show you all the work that I have in process now paintings and books and art um, and we wish you all um, a very happy safe healthy holiday season, whatever you celebrate. Our heart goes out to you. It's been a rough year for a lot of us. And um, we just want you to know that we send you our love and um, our good wishes. So until then, ciao for now.